what's good y'all it's your boy just chris and i'm back at it again with another video now today we got another special one we got my girl dr helen smith speaking up for men across america and around the world that have been silenced due to feminists now i'm not going to be doing too much talking during this video we're just going to listen to what she got to say because fellas it is truly beautiful all right we need more women like this, bro. Okay. Now, before we get into the video, you already know what I'm going to say. Make sure you got you some water. Not only so you can stay hydrated during the video, but so you can take that daily red pill. All right. Let's go ahead and get into it. Shout out to Words of the Wise, by the way. I am very excited to have Dr. Helen Smith with me now, the author of Men on Strike. Joining me now in the studio, uh, Helen, what do you mean when you say men are on strike? How? Um, men are on strike in terms of like marriage, fatherhood, and even the American dream in the sense that they're not even going to college as often because uh, there, mm -hmm. are, there are so many reasons. It's just become a very bad deal for men today and people don't realize it. People think men are immature, like there's all kinds of books written by Hannah Rawson, like The End of Men <laughs> and all kinds of things about the decline of men and manning up or whatever. But I think the real thing is that men feel that right now it's just a very poor deal in terms of legal issues. Men don't get kids as often. They're, they're only about 10% of the time do they get child custody. They're the ones paying alimony. We don't even, I just did a radio show and the guys were talking about how they literally were pushed out of the room when their baby was born and told, a mother was told that, was asked questions about, um, you know, is your husband an abuser and that type of thing. And it's just appalling what men wow. go through. I mean, I used to consider myself a feminist, but I thought feminism meant equality between the sexes, but now it seems to me special privileges for women. She just summed up feminist, feminism in a sentence. See, it's not about equality for them. They don't want equality. They just want special treatment for being a female. Just for being a female. That's it. They don't want to work for it. They just want it. They want it and they want it now. Uh, 20 years ago when I started my private practice, I had a man in a wheelchair who was being beaten by his wife and there, were, there was no help available for him. And it really got me thinking about what do men do in that situation? And just the men on my blog and the readers from all over the country just prompting me and helping me to understand what men are going through in this country. And the one, last thing I want to say is men are not allowed to speak up. So I'm here as their sort of advocate because if men speak up, they're called whiners, they're called, you wimps. know, wimps, man up. And they're that's why every time a man tries to speak some truth, whether that's female nature or what's going on in the society, he silence the go your own way movement has been silenced. The Crimson Capsule, AKA the Red Pill, is trying, is, is being silenced because women don't want the truth to be out there. People don't want the truth to be out there in YouTube and TikTok and all these other, um, all these other social media platforms are silencing us men and we don't have a voice anymore. And that's why, um, Dr. Helen Smith, shout out to you. Thank you for, you know, not only just talking about it, but actually helping us men because sadly we don't ha really have a voice like that. And that's why this channel exists. So I can say how I feel and you guys, my supporters, my, the brotherhood, you know, my brothers, we can have somewhere to express how we feel about what's going on in our society. They're not allowed to talk. I, I talk to men across the United States on my blog. I run a men's rights blog and I've worked with men for over 20 years in my private practice. And what I found is that men say that it's the legal ramifications. They don't have any legal rights in marriage anymore. Mm -hmm. There's something called culverture. And what it is is used to men held all the debt, all the cards in marriage and they held the legal rights. Now women do. Oh. And if you look at it, men, when they get divorced, they only get custody of children 10% of the time. Even if the they, woman's cheating. You know, if the woman's cheating and if that's not your child, most states say you still have to pay. You find yep. out three years later your three-year-old isn't yours, you still have to pay in most states. Jim McNamara is a, is a um, professor and he found that 69% of the time men are portrayed in the media in a negative light as buffoons, pedophiles, perverts. And what message is this saying? Example, fellas, Homer Simpson. Yes, I get it, it's just, an, it's just a cartoon. But a lot of times, even the sitcom shows, men are portrayed as dumb and horn dogs and Pretty much we, it's, it's almost like we are just, we're just dumb and like all we care about is sex and this and that. No, 
and that's sad because men are they're portrayed as dogs this and that just like the the whole men are trash thing like that's just another example fellas there's there's more examples i can say but you know i really want you guys to listen to what she's saying and i'm not going to talk too much but um i am going to give my input every now and then sending to people right. across the united states i mean to men all right so so you give some tips about what men can do to right. fight back for example stop letting women control the dialogue that's what the most respect? important yes well women now in fact here i am a woman at least you're a man and two women are talking about it but women control the dialogue most of the articles mm -hmm. and things about gender are written by women or they're written by men who have a feminist bent men need to stand up and say you know what i'm going to write about it i'm going to talk about it and right. quit being quiet men look yes. at things in terms of cost analysis and the penalties for marriage are so high and the rewards now are so low first of all there's there's legal costs of marriage there are so many men now who are just saying you know what it's just not worth it to me i'm going to be stuck paying the alimony i'm going to be stuck paying for child support and it's not just legal reasons it's also psychological ones where men feel that um, basically, they don't really have rights in marriage. Women hold all the cards now in reproduction and all kinds of things, and men don't. Well, that's all true. I mean, I agree with that completely. But it still doesn't absolve men of the responsibility to stop complaining okay. about how the cards are against them and man up and become men because you don't become a man until you assume responsibility. What, what man would take such a raw deal? I don't consider that a man. Well, That's it's not a, actually, it's not a raw deal. You, you derive deep satisfaction as a man by taking responsibility for other people. That's the only place you get deep, deep satisfaction. So men are supposed to take a really bad deal and sign their rights away. And you so you're pretty much saying that men just have to deal with it. So if I get a girl pregnant and then three years later, I feel like I feel I figure out that that child's not mine. I still have to pay child support because I'm obligated to and I should because I'm a man. And that's what men do. That's what's wrong with this society today. That is literally what's wrong. Men get in marriages. Their wife divorces them. They lose half of every. They lose everything, bro. How is that fair? How is that equal in any sort of way? The family court is literally against the man. What? Because we're man, we just got to man up and just deal with it. So that means we just got to deal with the shit call that a good deal. Look, you would understand economic well, rewards. Did. You did. Well, maybe that's that's good. And maybe you have a really good wife, but a lot of men don't feel that way. But see, Dr. Exactly. Here's where I get confused. I, and forgive me, I just went to a wedding last night, so I'm feeling all loved up. Euphoric. Very, yeah. very, because it was beautiful. <laughs> At any time that you do see a wedding, that the hope is renewed, and it does remind you but of not, what's great about marriage. Right. And so you act as though marriage is such a raw deal for men, but you do get companionship, and you get love, and you get a family. And I see men enjoying all of that and embracing all of that. That's a different topic. Those are also things that you can get with a relationship. We're talking about the legal aspect of marriage. That's, I'm talking about the political and the legal ramifications mm -hmm. of marriage. Talk where men shit. aren't getting such a good deal there. And there are thousands of men across the country that I've spoken to and that will tell you differently. And the statistics are bearing that out. A lot of men, you think men need to man up. But to man up, you have to be getting something out of that relationship. What you're saying is that men are getting something just by, by having a woman. They're well, just so lucky. Here's the thing. They're allowed. The one thing I agree with you on is men are getting away with having children without marrying the woman. They're not getting they away have. with it. What's happening is a lot of women, number one, don't want them. The lower level women, mm. what's happening is 40% of the women who are breadwinners, a lot of those lower level women are making seventeen to $23,000. Those women use the government to pay for themselves. They don't want a man. So rather than some Ugh. of those men are just opting. That's a Why hasn't That's a man disaster. written this book? Why hasn't a man written this book? You because men can't because men are silenced bro if a man wrote that book he'll be said oh he's sexist oh he doesn't know what he's talking about he'll be canceled bro that's why she's she's trying to help us bro she's on our side she's not actually talking on her ass bro what do you mean why hasn't a man wrote that book bro that's a dumb question that's a very dumb question can't speak up. I'm here to speak up because people will actually listen to a woman. It's really unfortunate. I want the next man, and I'm hoping by this book that that next man is out so, there. What, 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 what Hold on, I want to say something as a man because yeah. I, this always is frustrating me when I see commercials when men sort of speak and they're acting like men, right? And all these commercials are out there where the man's like the, the lazy guy on the couch. He's a tool. But look the what the culture back. is doing to the men. Mm -hmm. Culture is telling men, you are no good. You are no good in marriage. You are no good. Even you all are hearing here. 
saying man up to men, and that's a really negative message to be, to, to be sending to men. But what do you think the solution is? The solution is for us to have fair laws and things for men, and to yes. also, these commercials, we need to look at the culture and say, you know mm -hmm. what, quit treating men like trash. Seriously, we treat men very poorly in this society. That's fascinating to me, because as, as we've just gone through, uh, all of the forces at work here to find that wages for men are actually less today, the median wage for men is less today than in 1968. Exactly. The implications of that are extraordinary. They can't support a family uh, on that median That's one uh, of the reasons they can't, su they can't support families so um, lower income women don't want men as often and lower income men are getting le married less and less at mm -hmm. all ages. And part of it is not just that they're going on strike, but the women a lot of times don't want lower level men. The other thing is women are becoming so highly educated now that they want higher level men and the men don't want to go to college anymore. Exactly. Which, see, all these women are looking for a high value men, man, but there's not enough high value men, men out there for every woman, which then... See, see, once they further their education, they're only going to look above, above them. So they're not going to go below. They're not going to go below to a blue collar guy, or maybe a guy working a nine to five, or even a guy that's a plumber. Plumbers make like some plumbers make like a hundred, hundred thousand a year, bro. That's good money. But that's the thing. They're not going to look below. They're only going to look high. And most of those men really don't even want women that are in those fields. So that it becomes a problem. You know what I'm saying? There's not enough high value men for all these women, which then causes these women to be alone. And most of them got high standards anyway. You know what I'm saying? You got to deal with all this BS. Most men are just like, you know what? I'm done. I'm done dating. I'm done with this. I'm done with marriage. You know what I'm saying? Or if they're not done with dating, they're just like, you know what? I'm not going to get married. I'm just going to have a girlfriend for the rest of my life. And then that's where the, the, the fall of marriage comes in. Right there. Because colleges have become so feminized in some sense that a lot mm -hmm. of men don't. It starts early in the earlier grades. What, what do you mean feminized? Uh, I, I think, I mean, that resonates. But what do you mean? I mean that everything has become about what girls need, what women need. It's not about what boys need. A lot of times boys are into mastery. They're into and, you know, skill, competition, and our schools are so filled now with people who only look at sitting still, reading books that exactly. are basically for girls, and a lot exactly. of boys are interested in other things. They don't want to just sit still, and they want to learn in a different type of way, and the schools don't allow that. We have boys in this country who can't read, and mm -hmm. nobody does anything about that. We also have so many female teachers. There are only 16% of teachers now are men in the elementary schools. Is that right? Yes, and those female teachers, according to the, the London School of Economics, did a study, and they found that female teachers as a whole give lower marks to boys. Well, those son of the guns. Yes. Well, I don't know. Some of them. <laughs> well. the, the, the reality is right now society uh, is becoming such a constrained place. The political mm -hmm. correctness, hidebound orthodoxies. Mm -hmm. uh, women are doing well, but not mm -hmm. as well as it might be inferred. Right. For example, the Pew Research uh, study just recently showing that women well, were, uh, amount to 40% of the breadwinners. Mm -hmm. But when you look at those numbers, 63% of those women are on average earning $23,000 yes. a year. Right. They are effectively dependent on the state. They are yes. not breadwinners. It's the wrong term. They're not, they're not winning, and there's not much bread there. See, this is the so-called independent woman. See, they want to say they're independent, but then they do, they rely on the government to give them all these all these benefits that they want. So how can you be independent if you're depending on someone? That's not true independence, bro. You see, a man and a woman, we need each other, bro. That's why we're not equal. We're not equal, bro. We did listen. We're Listen, you're good at one thing and I'm good at one thing. You might be good at some things that I'm not good at and I might be good at some things that you're not good at. But this whole independent woman thing is really destroying y'all. Y'all don't see that feminist, modern day feminism has lied to you, bro. I'm sorry. That's the truth, man. Y'all can come at me if you want, but that is the truth. Wake up.
But what's happening is they don't need men anymore. You see, no, the I, they've let state have become their husband. The state is now the husband. That's and a great way to put it. That's the exactly husband, what it is. Husbands state, are now expendable. And the state isn't. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a level of dependency uh, that uh, is going to alter the way we live. I mean, first of all, there's lots of new these laws in, or rules in colleges. The colleges are, they say that if a man is found, used to it used to be a 90 to 100 percent, you had to find a man guilty of a sexual assault. And now on the college campuses that take federal funds, there was an Obama letter that in 2011 went out and it said, okay, any man that's found guilty of a sexual harassment or sexual abuse or a sexual assault all we have to have is 50% in a feather. In other words, there's these campus administrators. They have what's called the campus tribunal, and they control young men's sexuality by saying, okay, we don't really need a, a large amount of evidence. All we need is we think you did it. And that young man can be thrown out of school. They can have their, their career options limited because who's going to want to hire a guy who's been accused of sexual abuse or harassment? Um, and the other thing is people don't realize it, but in our society, for example, a young boy, and I have a, an example of this in my book, a young boy who's 14 or 15 who has sex with a 34-year-old woman, if she gets pregnant, that boy is liable for child support. And that's BS. Because you know why? If it was a man that would do that, it would, the, the, it would be a completely different situation. That man is still liable. He's 14 years old. He is still a kid. And he's held liable to pay child support for a 34-year-old woman sleeping with him, taking advantage of him. Do y'all see how unfair this is? I'm telling you, man, more men are waking up every day. And it's my purpose to wake up as many men as I can, bro. This is my life purpose, y'all, bro. I, I swear, man, I'm going to do everything I can, man. All right? I love the brotherhood, but this has to stop. Are you kidding? I'm not. I'm serious. And there's never been a case. Um, Michael Higdon is a professor at the University of Tennessee, and he did a paper on this. And one of the things that the paper said is there's never been a case where a boy at that age has gotten off. If you were 14 or 15 and you have sex with an older woman, even if it's statutory rape, it doesn't matter. You're liable for child support. Now, I, 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 I got to interrupt with a question right here. But if it, if it went the other way, joke. It, it was, I mean, if a, if a guy rapes a girl, uh, there's the the the, the, the There'd be an uproar. The man would be put in jail. Yeah, but the girl. So the girl couldn't possibly be held responsible for. No. I mean, that's insane. But that's the thing is, people talk about ir how irresponsible boys are of that age, and then they turn around. They suddenly, they're always so responsible that they know exactly what they're doing, even if they're having sex with a 34-year-old woman, and then they're ha she's having his baby. I mean, of course he's responsible, right? Because that 14 or 15-year-old knows exactly what he's doing. Right. I just think it's sort of ironic when it comes to men. They're immature until you need to slap their, you know, their hand or put them in jail or something. I don't look mm. at any type of feminist because the feminist movement, it seems like there's just, there has been a lot of power. And I think part of it's political. We have, um, one of the interesting mm -hmm. things is I found uh, that about 30% of women in the United States consider themselves feminists. But when you look at the women who vote, it turns out that about 70% of those women consider themselves feminists. So I think a lot of times the laws are driven by, I kind of call it matriarchy by proxy, but <laughs> men are afraid. Of course, if Barack Obama got up and said something negative towards women, he'd have a firestorm on his hands, just like we saw with Larry Summers, the president of, of uh, Harvard, right. got ousted, as you know, um, because he said something that women didn't like. And so men are afraid they could lose their position. They could lose, you know, their job. And, and then that's sort of why I wrote the book is because I want to talk to men about how, you know, how they need to speak out because I think men... And that's what I'm saying, fellas. This is why I made this channel because I always had a lot to say. And at first I was just like, you know, I don't know if I want to. But then I just like, I woke up one day, I was like, you know what? Fuck it, man. I, I got to do this, man. I have to say something. Like, I got I to gotta wake up more people. You know what I'm saying? Not just not just men, like delusional women too. Like y'all gotta wake up from this feminist shit, bro. And you simps, y'all need to wake up too because y'all being a feminized man. They they they're trying to change men into women, and women are trying to become men. It's dick envy, bro. They want to be us, but they don't want the responsibility of being a man. Does that make sense? They want to be a man, but they don't want the responsibility of being a man. Okay. Men, we have to speak up, bro. Even if we get silence, even if we got to keep on making new channels and, and go to different platforms, we have to keep this dialogue and this conversation going. 
we cannot be silenced, bro. Okay? And are afraid to come forward or to say anything because we're so used to thinking of women as the victims in our society and that men mm -hmm. can't be discriminated against. Well, how, how do men handle this? How do men speak out, whether it's uh, at a university? I mean, they'll get themselves in trouble. If it's on the job, they'll get themselves in trouble. If it's in a relationship, they'll get themselves in trouble. Uh, and they're taught this. Uh, they're taught to fear it, as you, as you uh, well document. So w w how do they go about it? Well, I think there are different ways, and I talk in the book about, you know, different ways to deal with it. Um, certainly, if you have um, a girlfriend or, a, you know, somebody potentially that you want to marry, I talk about ways in the book to kind of, you know, get to know this person for a longer period of time, sort of get a feeling for mm -hmm. how they treat you. I think a lot of men jump into things. They, they feel um, if they like a woman or they, they sort of they get involved and I think it's very hard for them to pull themselves back and to really put boundaries on women and it's hard men aren't hardwired to they're kind of hardwired more to protect women and it's very hard for them to confront uh, a woman and what she's doing but I think that's a very necessary part yes fellas you have to know if you're gonna get in a relationship you have to know your woman bro stop getting with women just because their looks and because they look good because she got a big booty because she got some big titties and shit like that stop that bro you have to get to know them man stop being scared to confront them on their bs if they bs and you let them know you set boundaries bro a relationship is about boundaries you're not going to let her disrespect you, bro. Don't let her disrespect you. Say something. Yes, I get it. It's hardwired in our brains to just want to please our woman and do all of this and that. But we have to learn how to be in our masculine frame and, and bring back that masculinity because we've been so, we've been brainwashed by this blue pill world and feminized by, by, by feminism because feminism is telling, oh, this is how a man should act. You should never tell... You should never have, a woman should never tell you how to act, okay? She's not a man, okay? She doesn't know what it takes. What she says doesn't matter. Because if you do what she says and do what she, oh, I like this and that, she doesn't like that, bro. She's lying to you, okay? So we need to get in our masculine frame, bro. And part of it is on us, yes. We did a lot of simping, bro. Everybody on this channel, everybody that's watching this video right now has simped one time before in their life. And if you haven't, you're a liar. We got to bring this back, bro. We, we have to take this society back, bro. We have to, man. Because if we don't, this world is going to be in a world of trouble. And it already, and you can already see it happen, bro. You're already seeing it happen right now. The modern day woman, bro, it's bad. It's getting bad. And it's not all of them, but the this feminist stuff, it's poisoning their brains. Okay? So we have to take it back. And we will. Part of a relationship is that you have to be forward about what you will and won't tolerate. When you see a woman mm -hmm. for the first time do something that's, you know, maybe she makes fun of men or maybe she tells you you're not going out with your friends or maybe she starts to put a lot of boundaries on that women. should be a red flag exactly yeah yes. how are you accepted or not accepted in academia and by your friend you know i mean what's what's your life like having these thoughts and, and beliefs um i used to be sort of a big feminist so my family was driven crazy by those thoughts now they just sort of tune me out. well wait a minute how'd you change I think it went so far the other way. I think um, as I got older, when I was younger, it seemed to me that women all had some of these problems. And then I realized as, as I got older that indeed that the society had changed, that the problems that women used to have in some sense have turned around and, and there's like a backlash against men. Also, I think because I've seen so many men in my practice, I in 20 years ago, I had a practice in New York, and one of the first patients I had was a man who was being beaten by his wife, and I couldn't get any help for him. And I realized at that point that, yes, men had a, it was a very serious mm -hmm. problem. And from there, I just became more open to it. But as far as myself, I mean, people don't bother me too much. Most people are, pro 
I think a lot of times people are surprised. Or if I talk to women about the book that I wrote, they they think it's like a cute book that a psychologist wrote. That right, they, right. Them, How do you rope a man in or whatever? But I think most men get it. I don't even have to say anything, but they totally get it. And you see this look of like this in their eyes, sort of like, oh, yeah, I get that. And you don't really have to say that much to them. And, you know, that's another thing, uh, domestic violence in this country, and people don't understand. If you say that men get beaten, too, by their, by their wives or spouses or whatever, or that it's a problem with men on the receiving end, you know, they, they look at you like you're some kind of nut job, but it, all you got to do is look at the Justice Department statistics. Well, it's true, and um, there's actually been some really good research that's come out, like, even from the National Institutes of Health and other places that show that about 50% of the time, women are instigating violence. Mm, what did I tell y'all, man? It's in the statistics, bro. They instigate it, bro. 60% of women start the domestic violence. They're acting like, see, this society is acting like women can't do any wrong and all women are angels. No. Once you put that pedestal on people, that literally deceives others and that manipulate other. Okay, women can't do me bad, so I'm going to go out here and be a good guy. Then you get your heart broken. You're like, whoa, wait a second. I thought women can't be bad. That's the problem right there. That is the root of the problem. When men get abused by women it's laughed at and it's not taken serious oh you're a man just take it like what am i not human anymore this is the problem guys this is why we have to take it back bro we have to take this back if not this world is screwed Vi domestic violence and that's a that's a high level people think like oh men don't really get hurt you know but what happens is men just don't really report it and we don't really think exactly the black eye. I mean remember Amy Winehouse I mean she had this boyfriend or husband and you'd always see him in the papers with a black eye that she gave him we would never accept that if a woman has a black eye like we're seeing with this recent case with Nigella Lawson the the um, I don't know if you're following that but the cook the lady who's a chef on TV um, there's a bunch of stuff in the papers all about how her husband tried to choke right. her. Right, yes, with the, and they got the picture of uh, his hand on her neck in the restaurant or something. And yeah. they're trying to, I've even heard reports about how they, people want to go after him. They want him arrested, this, that, and the other thing. But they used to show pictures of Amy Winehouse's husband all the time with a big black eye that she'd beaten him and punched him in the eye. And nobody cares because people just don't think that it hurts if it's a guy. But it hurts. Shout out to Words of the Wise. Man, listen, fellas. This is a very serious video. This is a very, you know, emotional video. You know what I'm saying? But all I wanted to say is, guys, is that, you know, this world we live in, you know, it's getting bad. You know what I'm saying? And I made this channel so I can show y'all what's going on and wake up men and women, the delusional women, to, to, to the truth. And I'm always going to keep it. A buck with y'all. I'm always gonna keep it a hundred with y'all because you know that's the person I am, and I just want to thank everybody that's been watching the videos, liking, commenting, subscribing, and even sharing it. I see you guys. I appreciate it because this is my purpose, fellas. I, I take this very seriously, man. Like, you know, all jokes aside, all the in and everything. Like, this is this this is. I love this shit, bro. And um, you know, just. Just, just be careful. Watch out. You know what I'm saying? Have discernment. Make good decisions. You know, don't think with this head down below. Think with this head. Think with your logic. Don't think with your emotions. Because when you think with your emotions, most likely you're going to make a bad decision. You know what I'm saying? So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Um, it's been your boy, Just Chris. And uh, I'm out. Y'all stay safe out there. Peace.